Hey there, welcome to day 20, which is also the start of a brand new chapter on authentication. So we have a lot to cover and keep in mind, yeah, day 20, that means 10 days to go. And at least probably four of those episodes will be dedicated to our final project. So that gives us about five or six videos to cover a lot of material. So let's get started. For many years now, Laravel has provided starter kits to get you up and running as quickly as possible. And yeah, when I say starter kits, I want you to think of initial project scaffolding for a typical app. So here's an example. Have you ever worked on a project that required users to log in to their account? All right, well, immediately, before you can even build something unique to the project, you require a registration form. You require a login form. You need a forgot password form. You need a confirm password reset form. You need an edit profile form. Uh, then you need routes and controllers and views and logic to orchestrate all of this. It's shockingly an immense amount of work. And the starter kits, specifically Laravel Breeze, automate the entire process. Let me show you. Now, check this out. I'm in my example project root, but let's go up one level to herd so that I can scaffold a brand new Laravel project just as a demo. Laravel new, I will call it app. All right, immediately it wants to know, do we want to pull in a starter kit? I will choose Breeze. And yeah, on that note, keep in mind, Starter kits are really meant to be used at the start of a new project. So yes, even in our example app, I could pull it in and I could install it, but it's going to be a frustrating process. And that's because Breeze assumes certain things. It will assume that you have a welcome view that you may have already deleted. It's going to overwrite your routes file. It's going to overwrite your layout file. It's going to pull in a bunch of blade components that might conflict with components you've already created. Yeah, it's a frustrating process. And that's why it's specifically meant to be used at the start of a new application. Okay, what stack do we want to use? How are you going to build your app? Is it a single page app using React? Are you using Vue? Are you using Livewire that you might not be familiar with yet? Or is it a traditional server-side Blade app with some JavaScript sprinkled in? We'll choose that one. Okay, do we want dark mode support? No. Uh, what test framework? Pest is fine. Do we want a Git repository? No. And we'll let that get to work. All right, next, which database will you use? SQLite is fine. So yeah, we fast forwarded, of course, but a ton just happened. We didn't just scaffold a new Laravel app. It set up your node dependencies. It installed them. It configured your database. It copied over all of the Breeze specific uh, scaffolding, like your routes and your controllers and your views and your components. And now we have an instruction to CD to the app and we can run PHP Artisan Serve. Or if you're using Herd, you can just access app.test in the browser. I will visit app.test, and here we go. We have a new Laravel project, but this time it's a little different. Notice we have login and register links at the very top. All right, let's give it a shot. We click register, and we have a, a typical registration form. Let me fill this out really quick. And here's my dashboard. We're in. I mean, come on, you have to appreciate how mind-blowing this is. And I'm not even using that word hyperbolic. Eh, maybe, maybe a little hyperbolic, but still, it's just so cool. Think about it. Within 20 seconds, we installed a Laravel project, we registered, and we are now viewing our authenticated dashboard. And it took, again, what, 20, 20 seconds? That's ridiculous. Anyone who has built this functionality in the past will instantly appreciate uh, how useful this is. So if I come up to my name here, of course, we can view and edit our profile. So let's change it to Jane Doe. Save it. There we go. If I refresh the page, that has been updated in the database. I can update my password. I can delete my account. And of course, I can log out. But I do want to show you, if I visit my dashboard, the URL is app.test slash dashboard. Okay, let's log out and try to visit that again app.test slash dashboard. And of course, it doesn't let me. Okay, so we have some level of authorization in place. Hey, if you want to access this URL, you must be signed in. Otherwise, we will automatically redirect you to the login page. Okay, so lots going on here. Let's have a look at our editor. 
Now, we will have a look here, but I do want you to keep in mind that initially, this might be a little overwhelming, and that's because Laravel pulls in so many files, but yeah, it's necessary. If you were writing this functionality from scratch, you would do the exact same thing. And if nothing else, this is an incredible educational resource to see how Laravel core, the core team, would recommend uh, implementing some of this logic. Let's have a look at registered user. How do we create a registered user in our application? Well, they have a controller that shows a view to register. All right, I can command click to that view and we can see how they would implement one of their views. Notice they make heavy use of blade components. They have a layout file just like we created. And then they also extracted blade components for the input, the label and the validation error. Very cool and very educational. Take notes. All right, let's go back. Next, when we submit that registration form, it hits this logic. And again, it looks very similar to some of the code that we've written. Notice in this case, they added a parameter here called request. So Laravel will automatically resolve and pass that into the controller method. But it's effectively no different than how we were handling this. It's just a more formal way to inject the dependency that you might prefer. But nonetheless, this and this, uh, as I often say, are effectively identical. Okay, so we validate the request. It looks like to register, you need a name, an email, and a password. And if that validation passes, then we create a new user. All right, it hashes the password. It fires an event. Now we haven't yet discussed eventing, but if you want a head start, here you go. You can review this helper function. You can click through, have a look at this, and then also take a look at an artisan command called make event. But yeah, we're not quite there yet. So let's switch back. Finally, we log in the user and we redirect them to their dashboard. Okay, so if we're following this idea of using Breeze as an educational resource, well, how, how, did, how did the core team ensure that if you're not logged in, you can't view your dashboard? Well, let's take a look at the routes file and see how they implemented it. Let's go into routes, web, and here are the routes that Breeze created for us. And sure enough, we have one for dashboard. Okay, so let's inspect this together. When the user visits slash dashboard, we load a view. All right, no security there. But then I see this section middleware and then keys for auth and verified. Okay, even if you don't know what middleware refers to, you can sort of gather that it's adding a bit of protection. Well, in order to access this page, you need to be authenticated, you need to be signed in, and also you should have confirmed or verified your email address. Okay, so I find that the term middleware can be a little confusing for newcomers. You know what I mean? It sounds very low level and technical and serious. Now, like the serious developers we are, we will implement some middleware. Uh, but you know what? It's not that scary. You can think of middleware like layers of an onion, like ogres, that lead to the core of your application. And each of those layers has the opportunity to do something. It can record something in the database. It can check for a header. It can check in the session to make sure you're signed in. It could do the opposite. It could ensure that you're a guest. So logic like that can all be handled within a middleware. So let's confirm our assumptions. If I remove this call to middleware entirely, and then as a guest, I try to view the dashboard, what will happen? Here's the home page. We're not signed in. If I visit my dashboard, no longer are we redirected to the login page. Instead, it tried to load the dashboard, but it did fail because if I scroll down at some point in the view, it tried to access the authenticated user. And of course, there is no authenticated user. So we're trying to grab a property called name off of null and can't do that, so it blows up. But yeah, in terms of education, once again, if you wanted to know how to grab the authenticated user after you signed in, now you know how. There is an auth class, or facade, how we refer to them, with a user method that gives you the current user who is signed in to the application. So cool. Okay, so if I switch back, I will return the call to middleware, and let's include just auth this time. Notice if I only have one layer of the onion leading into the core of my app, I can include it as a string. But if I have more than one, then I would pass an array. Both of these are supported. 
All right. So anyways, if I come back to my browser, give it a refresh, now we are properly redirected to the login page. And that makes sense. That's what the auth middleware does. Uh, behind the scenes, it effectively says, all right, let's see if you are authenticated. Let's see if you're signed in. If you are, then you're clear. I can pass you on to the next layer of the onion leading into the core of the app. In the core, you will load the dashboard page. Okay, but if you're not signed in, uh-uh, this, this is disallowed. You're not allowed to continue on to the next layer of the onion. Instead, I'm going to redirect you to somewhere sensible. And by default, that somewhere sensible is, of course, the login page. Okay, so that's all I'm going to show you in this episode. Again, I just want you to play around. So this is your homework. Go into the controllers and keep in mind, nobody expects you to understand all of this. So if you're thinking the complexity of this course just took a huge leap, no, it didn't. I don't expect you to understand everything. What I do want you to do, though, is get comfortable. Just consume it. Now, let these files wash over you so you get an idea of, of how seasoned developers would go about constructing their applications. All right. Then when you're done with controllers, come down to resources and you're going to notice, yeah, how are these organized? We have a profile directory. We have a dedicated folder for layouts. We have one layout for your app, one for guests, and then one for navigation. Okay. We have a folder for all of our components. So in our example project, we only created a couple, but now we have components for drop downs and modals and nav links. And if you want to swipe any of these, you totally can. It's open source. All right, so that has been your rapid fire introduction to starter kits and Laravel Breeze. And again, to reiterate, starter kits are meant to be used at the start of a new project, okay? So in the next episode, we will switch back to our little jobs example project. And I, I wanna give you some ideas for how you can handle authentication if you're not using a starter kit. So I'll see you then. <sighs>